Let's start off and talk about GTC, right? I mean, was there a bigger moment? It was the Woodstock of AI. And Pat, I got to be candid, man. Jensen was in his element in the middle of the SAP Center. We couldn't even get onto the floor. There was, was so crazy. much demand. It was a rock concert for AI lovers. And he didn't disappoint. Now, I'm going to kind of give you two things. And I want to, I'm going to, there's a lot of oxygen here. No matter how much I talk, there will be a lot of oxygen here. But I want to give you two things to, 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 to really, I came into this looking for. One is, I felt like this was the moment that NVIDIA had to secure its place as the technological leader in AI, meaning what is the company going to put forth that clearly says nobody's catching us? Sure, yeah. there's other options. Sure, there's other, you know, there's other SOCs being developed, ASICs, there's other GPU players, there's software abstractions, but we still are the apple of AI. Ironic this week to say that. Um, the second thing was... I was really, really dying to sort of understand how the company was going to advance its kind of customer lock-in, meaning, you know, it's been so clever with the developers and CUDA building that abstraction layer that basically has made it so sticky. And it's like, can they come up with what's next? Can they come up with something else that's going to be as sticky as CUDA has been, especially because you'll hear the competition talking about new compilers. You'll hear them talking about Rockham and One API and, and Jax and and uh, PyTorch, and you know, we don't need to, you can move the workloads from hardware to hardware. Well, what if you come up with a solution that makes it even stickier there to be running everything on NVIDIA's hardware? So of course, I will comment briefly on um, Blackwell. Now again, Blackwell is a chip, but Blackwell is part of the GB, the Grace Blackwell. And basically Blackwell is gonna be a system, right? There's really, nobody's gonna buy a Blackwell chip. You're gonna buy a system that's gonna be a large, <laughs> <laughs> system. Um, and it's going to be, what did someone on the competitive side say? Oh, an AI mainframe. I mean, we're in the era now where we're going to stitch all this together. It's going to be funny. connectivity. It's going to be compute. It's going to be GPU, CPUs, cores. It's going to be uh, Link, it, you know, NVLink. It's going to be InfiniBand. It's going to be in a massive rack. And by the way, it's going to be more economical to do it that way if you're an NVIDIA shop. And it's going to be uh, take up less uh, real estate. And, and by the way, that's really, really important. People, um, data centers, uh, there's limited space, limited power. And this is something that uh, he was very, very prudent to be speaking to. So long and short of it, I'll give a couple specs. You'll probably give some other ones too. Um, you know, they're talking about workload performance increase on the inference side with Grace by about 30 times, depending on the, on the floating point. Um, and energy cut by as much as 25 times. So this was a big topic because we've talked a lot about how how much power hogs GPUs can be. So they made some big advancements on inference, which has been something that AMD had made some big strides on. And then they made some advancements on lesser power. They also basically, just to give you kind of a relative data point, 8,000, um, okay, so on a previous training model, 1.8 trillion parameters, it would have taken 8,000 hopper GPUs and 15 megawatts of power. NVIDIA is saying now that 2,000 uh, GPUs, Blackwell, so about a quarter of which, and it'll do it at a quarter, of about four megawatts of power. So that was a really interesting data point. So um, because we're going time fast, I'll just say one other thing I wanted to talk about was the NIMS uh, platform. One of the things I think NVIDIA really wanted to get stickier to is going to be the on-prem data and the industry-specific LLMs. He talked about a weather uh, opportunity. He talked a lot about healthcare um, LLMs. But being able to take a microservices architecture with a container, be able to put the, um, you know, the libraries, the software, the, you know, the hardware infrastructure, on-prem, off-prem, um, so cloud and hybrid architectures, connect it to APIs and enable a company to take like a ServiceNow architecture, combine it with NVIDIA uh, hardware, and do so in basically a drag and drop, more or less, quote unquote, container, I think that's really interesting. And Pat, why do I think it's so interesting? Because they don't yet own everybody's prem data. But now you take all that prem data, put it in the container and make it available for compute, for accelerated compute. That's really sticky. So final thought, what I said is, did they achieve the two things? One, technological superiority. I think they did for the moment. And I, it's not over. I don't know that they've compelled anybody. Stock didn't move a ton because of this. And two, this whole NIMS architecture, super powerful in terms of connecting 
the prem data private LLMs that are going to become more pervasive as these big LLMs are limited to such a small number of customers, Pat? But you covered a lot and there's just so much to cover. We could have done this entire uh, Yeah, podcast. it could have been. So, so here's what I'm gonna focus on. First of all, springboarding off of NIMS. NIMS is the next new uh, lock-in. So like 13 years ago, 15 years ago when CUDA came out, it was literally uh, the driver set. And then that moved to developer tools, that moved to ML frameworks, that moved to models uh, from NVIDIA that you can use to a full up enterprise uh, stack that gets preloaded on Dell, HPE and, and Lenovo infrastructure. What NIMS does is it, is it really takes that to the next level and makes it easier for application development providers like Adobe and SAP and ServiceNow uh, to connect with data platforms like Cloudera, uh, Snowbricks, uh, NetApp, uh, folks like that. Uh, and then connecting the, the big model builders with the, the AI infrastructure. And this will make it easy uh, for people if you're all in on NVIDIA. Uh, you cannot, however, uh, leverage this to an AMD, an Intel, a Grok, uh, an Untether uh, uh, AI. So it is, it, you know, enterprises do need to enterprises and partners do need to uh weigh uh the potential lock-in but i gotta tell you at, at the beginning of a boom cycle um you know you probably have to do this right because ain't, none of the competitors are are close to offering uh something uh like this uh but yeah so uh, two edges on that on, on Blackwell, absolutely amazing. It's it, it's an absolute uh, total uh, beast. Uh, I, I want to get Signal 65's uh, Ryan Trout uh, on some of the claims. The claims for energy efficiency and inference have to do with not just the chip, but an entire cluster. Okay, mm -hmm. and and that's the comparison I want to see. And as a reminder, in comparison to both uh, AMD and Intel uh, and all the AI SOCs out there, this is something that doesn't ship to the end of the year, okay? And, and what's being compared, let's say, even on the MI from AMD is what is shipping in uh, right, uh, right now, okay? Um, but that, that's not to take any credit away from uh, NVIDIA uh, at all. Uh, on the platform side, on the hardware platform side, I do consider NIM part of a of, of the software platform. Uh, the networking uh, in the rack and and the switch, and then connecting rack to rack, is 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 amazing uh, to see. Uh, we once we get to uh, Broadcom, <laughs> right? We might have the debate on uh, on Ethernet. Uh, um, versus what NVIDIA is cooking up here. But overall, uh, NVIDIA did nothing but gain ground. They certainly didn't lose ground. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great analysis. Like you said, I think we could do a whole show on this. Um, had, to, had to move quickly, but I love the fact that you pointed out what's to market today, Pat, versus what will be in the market in the future. 